Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining me on the webinar for Visual Modflow Flex version 4.1, a webinar about what's new in the modeling world. So first, a few housekeeping items. Make sure your microphones or phone lines are on mute to eliminate any background noise or feedback. And there's a chat feature available with GoToMeeting. And please type in any questions that you have, and I'll try to get to them as the meeting progresses. I'll try and save that mostly for the end of the webinar where we'll do the live demo. If you have any questions, you can always email sales at waterlooheidrogeologic.com or support at the same. And I'll be recording this webinar and make a copy of it available from this or one of the other sessions later this week or next. It'll be available on YouTube and I'll have links from the company webpage as well as from the LinkedIn group. An overview of what we're going to talk about this afternoon is a brief review of uh, Visual Modflow Flex and how it's laid out, a summary of the new features and improvements, and then we'll do a demo of some of those features, and then we'll have a bit of a Q&A. Visual Modflow Flex is a graphical user interface that allows you to build groundwater models, conceptualize hydrogeologic systems. The groundwater models that it allows you to build are based largely on the USGS Modflow codes and its variants along with mod path, zone budget, and some of the transport options as well. MT3DMS and uh, new to this version, also we have Modflow Surfact. You can also calibrate your model using PEST or doing that manually, and then also visualize your results in 2D, 3D, or using the Flex or Composite Viewer. And then these are the, the new features that we've added, marked in an asterisk, and we'll talk about each of those individually in a minute. So Visual Modflow Flex, a, a brief overview of, of what it is and how it works. It's based largely on workflows. There are two general workflows that you can make use of. The first is a conceptual model, which is grid independent, and it's recommended for new projects. That allows you to collect all your GIS and vector data, bring it into Flex, and build your model independent of your grid, and then work over into the numerical model, which is where all the Modflow and variant models happen. That's grid-based, and it, it's recommended for importing of existing projects and then also for your final adjustment and calibration of your models. So here's a, a quick snapshot of the steps in the workflows for each of the conceptual and numerical model workflows. And they're linked at the last step of conceptual model to numerical model. There's a, a conversion process then. Once you've built your grid, then you populate your numerical model. Getting right into the new features, we've worked in various work areas, so I'll, I'll go over the first set on this slide and then there's another set on the next slide. The first set, it has to do with visualization and settings, and so what you're able to do now is navigate with the keyboard through all of the views. That allows you fine control over the direction of the model as well. You can now digitize and move your model at the same time. So if you're zoomed in and want to digitize a fine feature, say a river or a ditch at small scale, you can do that and then pan with the keyboard and still maintain the, the digitization uh, steps along the way. So it allows you to do that as well. And also when, when rotating the model, you can rotate it in, in one direction, either vertically or horizontally. Then you can also add in uh, custom contours. So in our, in our color maps, you now have the ability to specify exact contour levels, and then those, the contour lines for each of those will appear. In the workflow category, we've uh, allowed you now to dynamically change your transport modeling objectives at any time. So if, if you find the model is not supporting your original modeling objective or conceptual framework, say you, you wanted to add in dual domain because you couldn't do that before, or you hadn't thought that it was an important physical process in your model, you can go back now and add that dynamically in. You can also translate and run individual packages and turn either the translate or run steps on on supported packages. So what that allows you to do is make use of packages that you've developed outside of the modeling framework or outside of Flex and still use those as long as they're named uh, the same as your base model file and they're in that folder then you can make use of, uh, for example, the MNW package if you've developed it outside of Flex. In terms of grid editing, now you can update conceptual models or build your grids with exact grid or cell size. 
steps. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that, how that works. And then in terms of property and boundary conditions, now when you digitize uh, features for LGR, they can span the parent and child grids in a single assigned step. And I'll demonstrate that as well. New with this version, MT3DMS and Surfact have dual domain mass transfer available as a modeling objective. And we've also introduced the unsaturated zone flow package, UZF, and the TMP, time varying material properties, which is associated with Surfact. In terms of UZF, that package is one dimensional vertical flow through the unsaturated zone. And it's available with ModFlow 2005 and NWT models. So the other group of features, we've updated some of the flow and transport engines. In terms of ModFlow 2005, we're current with version 1.12. And with ModFlow NWT, we're current with version 1.1.2. And then Surfact is new to Flex. And we've introduced flow, transport, and time-varying material properties. And that's for, for those of you that are classic interface users, transport and TMP1 are new to uh, Visual ModFlow. And then in terms of general features, we've added in multi-monitor support so you can undock and redock windows and make use of those extra screens that a lot of people have now. And then you can also open a Flex file right from the Windows Explorer. They'll save you a couple of clicks. And there's also improved performance, better memory handling and speed for models relative to version 4.0. And then we've also addressed about 50 bugs, which are listed in the, the readme file. Before we get to the questions, let's get to the demo. So in terms of some of the view settings, unfortunately you can't see me manipulating the keyboard, but you can see discrete actions of me pressing the up key. So if I'm holding shift and up, I can rotate the model up and change the pan angle. And then I can also rotate about a central axis. I can hit the home button and then rotate again. So we can do that. You can also pan left and right and up and down. So you have a little bit more fine control over that. In terms of the contours, if I go to the contour lines option for a given feature, then I can add in 320. And let's pan over. So the 320 is there, and I'll add in one more just so you can see it. So we'll do 330. Hit apply. And there we go. You'll notice uh, 330 was just added. Uh, that's particularly useful if you're mapping uh, contours and you have some regulatory limit that's maybe not a round number, you can, you can just add in those values. In terms of uh, modeling objectives, if I go into the, the modeling objective step on the numerical workflow, first of all, you'll notice that if I turn on transport, there's a bunch of new dual domain mass transfer options. A lot of those are available with Surfact. Just as a reminder, Surfact is a uh, commercial version of ModFlow that's sold as an add-on, and it was developed by HGL, uh, an affiliated company, although not directly related to us. And they have uh, a bit more options in terms of the dual domain mass transfer, but you also have some of those options in MT3DMS. In terms of other modeling objectives, uh, you can now model both saturated flow and variably saturated flow in groundwater and in soil vapor. So if you're modeling unsaturated flow, the UZF package is the default. And that's available again with ModFlow 2005 and NWT. And if you switch over to 
the Van Genuchten or Brooks Corey uh, saturation models, then those those are available with Surfact. There is a demo version of Surfact available with version 4.1 of Flex. The only limitation on that is that your model can't exceed 10,000 cells in total. So as long as you're under that threshold, then then you can run pretty much any functionality with that demo version. So that's that portion of it, and we'll switch over then to the translate step. Let me put it back to saturated so we can see the full functionality there. You'll notice that the single engine run as well is, uh, is a little bit different. Now you choose one flow engine and one uh, transport engine, if that's available. And then in the transport step, there's now a series of advanced settings for each package. Each package then has a general set of advanced settings that includes some basic information about where files are written, uh, what the file extension is, and then also whether or not that package is run and or translated. A certain packages, like the basic package, is always required with a modflow run, so uh, the run setting is always set to yes. But the translate, uh, sometimes you have your own version of the basic file, so you may want to uh, not translate it and overwrite that, that custom file that you've got. If we go to a more common package, like the river package, you'll see that you can actually set both the run and translate options. For uh, more advanced packages or more complex packages, there's other advanced settings, like in the UZF package. You've got a few of the, the options that are associated with that package that are available to you. Those are documented in the help settings and also in the, the standard Modflow USGS website. In terms of grid editing, cell size control for conceptual models, if we go over to the conceptual model and we add in a new finite difference grid, then you'll notice that we have sort of an odd size width and our cells are set at 860. If I wanted to do a cell height of 50, or actually let's pick, say, 21. Um, actually, that's not going to change it, so let's try and pick a, a weird number, say 57. Then you'll notice that the height actually changes, and it, it just extends the model a little bit uh, taller and or wider, depending on what you've done. Uh, but then that gives you exact and precise control over the cell heights. So if you're basing your conceptual model on, a, on an irregular shape, say between boundaries of, of two rivers, east and west or north and south, then, then you'll have a, obviously an uneven grid extent, but you still want even uh, cell spacing, then you can control that using this, th these options. In terms of the property and boundary conditions, if we go over to an LGR grid, And I want to assign a new, let's say, a river that spans the, the cells. So if I assign it polyline, and we'll just span right through the parent and child. I think it's taking a little bit longer because of the webinar. But if we go through here and let's just assign it. Just assign some default properties. So I've, I've now assigned it for the parent. I'll have to move over to the child. Okay, so when I hit finish, it's assigning it to the appropriate layer. Now you'll see that it's spanning through both the parent and the child in one, one step or one digitization. Um, and again, to show you some of the, the keyboard panning and zooming, if we zoom in a little bit and say we want to add in a tributary, we 
we can do that. So I will assign another polyline. And you'll notice that I can now pan around within the model just using the keyboard. And I'll cancel out of that. We don't need to parameterize the whole thing. All right. We've gone over the dual domain mass transfer and the UZF. In terms of time varying material properties, if I go over to Surfact and I define some boundary conditions, then we can add in the, the transient material properties and assign those in. So the, the time varying material properties, what that does is if I finish, then you'll see the dialog box show up. It allows you to, to define um, some scaling properties for your horizontal Ks and your vertical Ks as well as leakants. The vertical K and leakants are mutually exclusive, so you can pick one or the other. And then you can also modify your, your storativity and your uh, specific yield. The SX is a typo, it should be SS, and we're going to fix that this week and get a patch out for that. But you put in the values here, and everything is based on a value of, of whatever your horizontal conductivities are, or the, the base units are. If you enter in a value of 1, then it, it will, for that, that particular stress period, then it will multiply that value by the scaling factor. So you, again, you put in the scaling factor rather than a, a straight conductivity value. In terms of the UZF values, you can assign a polygon for that. So I'll put in a, a value here and I'll give you a preview of, of those. Available variables for the UZF package include FINF, which are real positive values for infiltration rates in the vertical direction, PET, which is the evapotranspiration demand rate within the extinction depth. EXTDP is the extinction depth, and EXTWC is the extinction water content, below which ET cannot be removed from the unsaturated zone. Let me show you the multi-monitor support as well. So we've got the ability to undock a tab, you can drag it out, but it won't cooperate with the webinar. So it should refresh in a second. There you go. So you can see there's a um, a second window here, and I'll I'll drag it across. It's now snapping back in. Let me try that one more time. So you can see it's sort of sneaking across the uh, the window there. And you can do that with multiple monitors and you can have multiple tabs undocked. So let me try that. Should be able to see now two, two windows that are on the side there. So that you can do that with multiple windows. You can drag it back into the to the main window again, or you can just right click on the on the window title bar and redock the tab. Thanks everyone for your time. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, please let us know.